Tammy Wyke's love of hermit crabs began 45 years ago with a jumbo-sized purple pincher that she named Lias. Unfortunately, not much was known back then about how to successfully keep hermit crabs. Over the years, with much trial and error and a lot of research, Tammy finally learned what crabs need to survive the molting process. This changed everything. Following her passion, she began her business, now known as the Hermit Crab Patch, in order to help pet hermit crabs thrive in captivity. Please welcome Tammy Wyke. Today I'll be sharing videos and observations of my pet hermit crabs, Cenobita clypeatus, commonly known as purple pinchers during mating season. First, let's take a look at the external anatomy and talk about the differences between a female and male land hermit crab, and then I'll show you how I sex my crabs. A female crab has two openings, called gonopores, that are located on her underside at the base of her third pair of legs. Eggs produced in the ovaries pass through these openings to be fertilized during mating. The eggs are then attached to the three pleopods, where the developing embryos remain until ready to hatch. A male doesn't have the two gonopore openings at the base of the third legs and doesn't have pleopods. Instead, at the base of his fifth legs or gill grooming appendages, he has a pair of sexual tubes. In male Cenobita clypeatus, the sexual tubes are symmetrical and deliver the spermatophore during copulation. Using one of my jumbo females, I would like to show you how I sex my hermit crabs. First, I'm holding her shell in my left hand, which is my dominant hand. As I begin to turn her over, I'm using my other hand for support, so she feels like she has support underneath her. The higher you hold the crab, the easier it will be to see the last pair of walking legs and you're looking for two holes called the gonopores. This is my male Jumbo. I'm holding him with my left hand, reaching up so that when I allow him to touch my hand, I can lift the back of his shell to expose the fact that there are no gonopores. And here you can see my female's feathery appendages called her pleopods, which are on the left side of her abdomen and used to carry her eggs. This would be another way to sex a female. I have 25 purple pinchers living in my outdoor cage that was built by my husband, Kirk. The six foot by six foot above ground block base is filled with two feet of sandy soil mixture for molting. Since we live in central Florida, we can mostly keep the cage open. However, in winter when the temperatures can get fairly cold, we install visqueen panels over the open sections and use an overhead radiant heater to maintain a comfortable temperature for the crabs. Mating season here starts in May or June and ends in September or October and usually consists of about three months of mating activity. Over the years I've had crabs mate before, during, and after both the full moon and new moon phases. 
some of the signs to watch for indicating that mating season has begun are seeing a pair of crabs with one on top of and holding the other, or a group of crabs surrounding the pair. You can see the female under the jumbo crab that is wearing the camo shell. You may see new holes or pits in their substrate. Some may even contain crabs. In this photo, you can see the shells of two of my jumbo crabs, but there is also a female you can't see that is further in. And finally, you may notice a visible orange line on top of a female's abdomen, indicating that eggs are available. Females that are receptive and ready to mate appear to release pheromones that initiate mating behaviors in males. This smaller female is rubbing the base of her antenna with her maxillipeds or mouth parts and then strokes her left antennule. At the base of each antenna there is an opening called the nephropore that secretes urine. This also may be where the pheromones are released. The male reacts quickly to the release of pheromones by turning the female over, so she is on her back where he holds her firmly, using his walking legs and claws. Soon another male has detected the scent and has approached to attempt to intercept the closely guarded female. Smaller males that try to participate usually don't stand much of a chance and are seen more of a nuisance. Sparring males engage in kicking and pushing motions using their claws. Outstretched walking legs held high and wide to appear larger and establish dominance is another intimidating tactic used. When another jumbo male joins in to try and take the female, the battle escalates, leaving her literally caught in the middle, rolling around. The males may also engage in what looks like shell fighting behavior. Often a male comes up from behind and grabs another male's shell, rocking him in an attempt to get to the female. Here a much smaller male manages to successfully gain control of the female, but only for a moment. It's not long before the jumbo male reclaims her. During mating season, it's the jumbos that clearly run the show. As the group of competitors grows, it becomes increasingly hard to ward off the advances of the many challengers. All it takes is one distraction, and the female has been stolen by another jumbo crab.
finally, the original Jumbo gets his female back, and his competitor is taken for a spin. In my crab attack, males highly outnumber females, so competition can be fierce. As you've seen, there is little regard for the poor female crab during all of this. These battles just prolong the inevitable. Eventually the males tire of the annex and either wander away or they go find another female to pursue. In this next section of video, we see the same jumbo male mating with one of my jumbo females. She is already on her back in the mating position. To signal that mating can begin, she gently palpates the male's mouth parts using her walking legs and claws. He's still having to ward off the occasional competitor, but things have calmed down considerably. At this point, the male comes further out of his shell placing his sexual tubes opposite the female's gonopores so that the spermatophore transfer can begin. The actual mating position of the male is very distinct. As you can see here, his body is at an almost 45 degree angle from his abdomen.
After the spermatophore transfer is complete, the male continues to guard the female from other males while she remains on her back. During this time, as you will see, he engages in a rhythmic stroking of the female's claws. I've also seen this occur prior to mating as well. When I've checked in the past, at around one and a half hours after mating, there is a liquid mass of loose eggs within the female's shell. About two hours later, eggs have become attached to the female's pleopods. Here is the same female after mating. Her underside and gonopores are covered with spermatophore. This next image shows another female, giving us a much better view of what the spermatophore looks like. Eggs are extruded through the female crab's gonopores, where they pass through the spermatophore and are fertilized. Freshly extruded eggs are orange-red in color, which is the visible yolk. As the developing embryo grows, the egg yolks become depleted and the eggs appear gray in color. At this point, you can also clearly see the compound eyes. Finally, after carrying the eggs for three to four weeks, they will be ready to hatch in the ocean. The newly hatched Zoe will eventually develop into beautiful land hermit crabs. We hope you've enjoyed this video showing the mating behaviors of Cenobita clypeatus. For a more technical explanation of mating and land hermit crabs, make sure to watch the CrabCon 2023 presentation by Stacy Bolts, which is located on the CrabCon YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.